In this video we'll show you how we can draw up the part that was uh, sent through uh, using the Partmaster 2D CAD system. Uh, so um, I've created a bitmap image of the PDF file just so that uh, I can uh, um, import that and show it to you on the screen so you can see where I'm getting the sizes from. Normally of course you'll be working uh, from uh, a drawing. Um, or if you have a DXF file of the part then even easier because we can just uh, create profiles of the parts we want to machine without having to redraw it. But in this case we'll start from scratch and draw up the component. So we've got a blank sheet of A4 paper here. Uh, so the uh, easiest way to start this is to draw some lines which pass through the datum point which is the centre of the piece of paper and then I can draw lines which are parallel to them. So I go into line mode and I choose angled line, set my snap mode to near and then as I move the cursor around you can see that the line is snapping onto the nearest thing to the cursor which in this instance is the centre point. So I click to accept that. Now I use the properties to set the angle of the line and draw another line there. So now I can just draw lines which are parallel to those. So we'll just do this top section first. If you draw too many lines uh, on the screen then it can sometimes be confusing. So the thing to do is to break up the, uh, the part into um, uh, sections. So we'll draw lines which are parallel to the vertical one. So that's 16mm to the left and then working backwards from there I can just take the dimensions directly from the drawing so this one is 4 to the right and that one again is 7 to the right so that's got the vertical lines here now I need to draw the horizontal lines here so I am stay in line parallel mode and choose the horizontal line so I want 63.5 divided by 2, and that's going to be above the centre line. This just saves us having to use a calculator. 61 divided by 2. OK, so we've got the lines that we want there. Uh, now there's sharp corners on these parts here, but there's a chamfer there. So what I'll do is I'll just zoom in on that area. Okay, so the sharp corners are here and the chamfer is on this part. So I use intersect with clip items and clip that line to that line, this line to that line, that line to that line. Now I use chamfer, clip items, size is 0.3, this line to that line. So that's done the top section. If we zoom out again, we can see that that's completed. Now I can draw some lines which are for this section here. So in this case here, 40.5, I've got a bit of a tolerance that I need to take care of there. Uh, so if we went to mid tolerance on that, that would be 40.45 divided by two. So I draw a line which is parallel to the center line so that's 40.45 divided by 2 and that's above okay so that's got this shoulder here now i'll want a line which is two millimeters parallel to the front face to the left and where those two lines intersect I can put on this chamfer here this is a different method of using a chamfer command um, so we can draw a line and it's an angled line the angle is minus 20 degrees and if I change my point mode to intersect then by using the mouse wheel I can zoom in and make sure that I'm picking up the right intersection point there. Okay, so now I can just zoom in and we can trim up those parts. Use intersect with trim. And then I use delete just to get rid of that line that I no longer need. So that's the, the outside uh, done. So if we uh, 
we're just interested in doing the outside of the shape then we could just create a um, profile of that so I'll just trim up these last two lines here so do that one to that one that one to that one okay so we've got the basic shape now I need to create this as a profile which the machining software will follow to do that I use the red NC button and that shows me the datum point which is where Z and X0 will be and I want to create a profile a contour which is the second one down is for milling the profile is for turning so now I create the contour it's not an enclosed shape so I need to give it the center line so that creates the profile uh, for this shape so I will now take that through into the machining software so let's save this drawing away save as and I'll call that diaphragm number two and we'll take that through into the turning software okay so we're starting a new job so it shows us the machine setup we've got uh, a lathe and we're working in millimeters the tool change position I need to make sure that we set the tool change position in X uh, sorry in Z and in X <coughs> pardon me when we are in the CAD system we're always working in X and Y because it's a general purpose CAD system used for milling turning and wire EDM so it's only when we come into the um, uh, machining modules that uh, we work in the correct uh, axis designation so we're working in Z and X here but everything has been uh, automatically uh, uh, created uh, for those uh, sizes so this is the rear tool change position if we have lathes with a front or a rear tool post then we can address both so that's the basic shape um, on the left hand side here we have a window where tools will be defined and program operations will appear below it so to define tools we use the bottom toolbar here so we'll define a tool so this is a general purpose uh, CNMG uh, lathe tool so we'll tell it that this is mounted on a rear turret and it's approaching from the rear if we set the tip radius to something other than the default which is 0.8 then the Z and X offsets are automatically updated for us so if we were using a roughing tip it's probably a 0.8 uh, diameter uh, radius uh, the cut depth this is the uh, maximum cut depth that we want to use so whenever we're doing a, uh, a roughing operation it will use this but we can override that if we need to so that's defined the tool now let's select that tool for use so this is the tool we're going to use and we probably want to use constant surface speed so let's have a speed of 200 meters a minute the maximum that we want the spindle to run at whether the spindle is running counterclockwise or clockwise depending on how your tools are mounted and your feed rate will probably be feed per rev and if you need to use coolant then you switch it on here so that has defined the tool and selected the tool now we need to do a uh, an operation to uh, face off the uh, the front of the component so we would use a facing command <coughs> pardon me uh, so we need to set up the cycle limits so these are the two corners of rectangle which represent the start and end point for machining so we can use the cursor or if we want to we can type in the exact values and the end point will be the center of the bar so this is an external cycle and we're facing so we're turning down towards the um, center line we don't need to use a limiting profile so we can uh, blank that and we can set a cut depth which is different to the default on the tool if we need to so we click OK and that produces the tool path the red line is a rapid and the blue line is feed rate 
from the top we can set the tool views so we can animate the tool okay so that's produced the facing off operation we could use that same roughing tool now to area clear the um, the stock so in this case we'll use a turning cycle which is turning towards the chuck and again we need to give it the limits of where we want the tool to work between so that's one corner of a rectangle and this is the opposing corner of the rectangle so the tool will try to work within those areas but this time we'll get it to use the um, uh, limiting profile so that it doesn't cut past the uh, profile and we can leave a finishing allowance which can be different in Z and in X and again we might want to modify the cut depth So when that's producing the toolpath, it's going to leave a section of stock which is equal all the way round, so there won't be any steps. If we wanted to use a different tool for finishing, then we could define our next tool, and maybe this time we would use a smaller tip radius but the rest of the sizes can stay the same if we did want to use a different shape tool then we just give it the angle of the tool so this would be a DNNG we select that tool for use and set the spindle speed and the feed rate so we might want a slower feed rate on there so now we can give it a profile turning operation so this will produce the um, finishing pass for us. It may be that we don't need to machine up the front face because that's already um, been completed. So we can use the options tab to set the spans. So each element of the profile is numbered as a span. So obviously this is span number one. So if we go into the options tab, we can say start at span number two. And if we don't want it to go down the back, it won't go down there anyway because the tool won't allow it to, the tool geometry. But if we want it to stop it dipping into there, then we could give it the end span as the last one here. So it would be span number eight. Okay, so that's produced the facing, the external roughing and finishing. The tool is left in its position where it's run off the job, so we probably want to send the tool back to its home position. So we use the go to command, send the tool to the home position, move in the Z axis first. So that's sent the tool back to its home position. At any time we can run the 3D simulation, so if we do that now, the machine tool we're using is a standard lathe so that loads the data into the simulator the tools that we've used are shown here or we could use tools from a library if we wanted to we could see those tools around in the main screen we go into simulate So we can use the mouse keys to adjust the view and to adjust the um, size of the simulation screen. And then we have the video buttons at the top. Okay, so that's showing us the tool and the holder. As I say, we can draw the tool tip and we can draw the holder 
exactly as it is so we can check further for collisions at any time we can run the simulation again in whichever axis we want to do that and then we can replay the screen and view it in a different method Okay, so that's how we uh, can create the program for the first part of the job. The last thing would be to uh, post-process. So I'll go back into centerline mode and post-process that. And then we can use the um, uh, post-processor which suits our machine tool. Uh, a fairly standard um, post-processor would be the generic FANUC but of course the post processing can be tailored to any one of the machines that you might have okay so that's the first video in this series uh, then we'll do the next one which shows you how to do the inside of the shape